Uh, in the book Small Miracles, there is an amazing story. It's a, it's a true story, and I share it with our audiences a lot, uh, of what many people would call a miracle. And for me, it's, uh, it's a demonstration of just how real this field is that connects everything. It's a story of a young Jewish boy, his name was Joey, uh, who at the age, uh, I believe, of 19, suddenly woke up one morning, began to question 5,000 years of Jewish tradition. He began to question all of the things he'd been taught by his family, uh, and his father took it as a personal offense. He said, how can you question this, this lineage of, of, of wisdom and tradition? And Joey said, I've got to go out in the world and find out for myself if, if these things are true or not. And his father said, uh, if you turn your back on your tradition and you go out in the world and search for yourself, he said, you're no longer my son. I have no son. And Joey said, I've got to do this. And he, and he left. And he went into the world and he studied uh, in the ancient and in, in the, uh, the Eastern traditions, Buddhist traditions, uh, in, in the Jewish traditions. And he was in a small cafe, uh, and I believe it was in Paris. And you never know who's going to walk into those cafes. And a friend of his walked in from the States that he hadn't seen since he left. And the first thing his friend said was, I was so sorry, Joey, to hear about the death of your father. And it was the first Joey knew that his father had died. And so he immediately came back to the States and he began uh, speaking to his father's friends and their neighbors. And what he found is rather than turning his back on his son, his father had done just the opposite. He was so proud of his son for having the strength to question 5,000 years of faith. And he, he spoke about his son incessantly and honored his son's courage. And this led Joey back into the Jewish tradition that he had left to explore. Uh, and it eventually led him uh, in a traditional pilgrimage to the, to the Holy Wall in Jerusalem. And uh, if you've ever seen this wall, you know that it's made out of these massive uh, stone bricks that have been there for so long that the mortar holding them together has fallen out. So where the mortar used to be, there are empty spaces, and the tradition is to inscribe a prayer on a paper or a cloth, roll it up, and place, it, place your prayer in, into that wall. And this is what Joey was doing. He, he'd written a prayer to his father asking for his father's forgiveness, for the pain that he'd caused and the suffering in the family. And he was pacing back and forth in front of the wall looking for just the right place where he would leave his prayer. And there was a place that caught his eye and as he was raising his hand to put his prayer into that place, the moment that he did that, another prayer that was already in there somehow magically fell out at his feet. And as he reached down to pick up the prayer that had fallen out, it was already partially unrolled and he, he already recognized what was happening here. It was a prayer in his father's handwriting that his father had written before his death and had come to precisely the same place and put in precisely that crevice in the wall that Joey had been drawn to. And as Joey read the prayer, it was a, it was a prayer from his father to God asking for forgiveness for turning his back on his son and how much he really loved his son and how proud of his son he was. And the reason I share the story, for two reasons. First of all, when we hear the story, there's a feeling within us. I feel it every time I share it. That feeling is a language. It's a nonverbal language. And if I just simply said to you or to an audience, have that feeling right now, you might be hard pressed to do it because there's no reason to have the feeling. But when we hear stories like that, that feeling came from a place of innocence, uh, of emptiness, of non-judgment. You didn't know what was going to happen, but you feel a feeling when you hear that story. Number one. Number two, for Joey to find precisely the crevice in the wall where his father had been months before his death. There obviously, and for, that, for him to be there that moment and for that prayer to fall out of the wall at his feet, and this is a true story, there obviously was a communication that was not bound by time or space, or in this case, even life and death. It was a message from beyond his father's life in this world. And for that to happen, there's got to be a conduit that carries that message. That's the divine matrix. That's the field that we're talking about.